Hey there do-it-yourself technicians. Today we're making a do-it-yourself news or advertising screen for under $100. In fact, probably under $50. This is part two, all about setting up the software. If you missed part one, all about the hardware, you can catch it up by clicking the link up here. Then come back to this episode. First, we're gonna start with the slide deck. Create whatever slides you want people to see in Google Slides. And then when you're finished, go File, Publish to Web. Select 10 or 15 seconds, or whatever you think works for your audience. Tick the boxes to Start and to Restart, and then click on Publish. Copy the link that's there. That's the address for your slide deck. I strongly recommend using a URL shortening service to shorten this link. One of the ones I've used a fair bit is bit.ly or bit.ly. There's two reasons I recommend this. Firstly, it's much easier to make sure you get the URL right when you put it into the script for the system. But secondly, if your short URL is set up so that you can edit the destination later, you can actually change some of the settings of the slide deck or change to a completely different slide deck without changing any of the scripts in the hardware at all. I have my own internal Tech Doctor redirector, so I've set that up myself. For this episode, I'm gonna use the Raspberry Pi Model B 3 Plus because that's what I usually use for development. Other things you'll need, a micro SD card of at least eight gig, a keyboard and mouse, a HDMI display, and a micro USB power supply. You'll also need a PC that can write to a micro SD card. I'm using a Windows machine that has one of those card readers built in. You may need an adapter like this one, or possibly even a card reader, depends on your setup. So we're gonna start by going to raspberrypi.org. There's a link to the project page up here, which has got all the links on it for you. There's lots of great stuff on the Raspberry Pi page, but we want software. Then we're gonna scroll down to the Raspberry Pi imager and download it. It'll take a few moments to download and then you can run the installer. Click install and wait while the software installs. At the end, press finish and the software will start. First, choose your OS. There are lots in this list to choose from, but we want the Raspberry Pi OS, desktop 32-bit. Next, choose your micro SD card that you wanna to write to. Choose write and then choose yes to the current contents of the card being erased. The software will go through the process of downloading, writing, verifying, and finalizing your card. This takes in the range of 15 to 20 minutes. At the end, my PC popped up that it didn't recognize the disk and wanted to format it. Click cancel. It doesn't recognize it because it's not in a Windows format. It's in the Raspberry Pi OS format. Click continue and then you can remove the micro SD card from your PC. Install the micro SD card into your Raspberry Pi and plug everything else in with the power going in last. The Pi will now go through its first boot sequence. This will take a while and you'll end up at the setup screen. Click next. Now we need to set up a few things, country, language, and time zone. These should be all pretty self-explanatory. I also tick the box down the bottom for use English language and a US keyboard, and then click next. The system sets itself up and then asks for a new master password. Enter it twice and make sure you record it somewhere safe. You probably will never actually need it, but you don't want to need it and not have it. As you can see here, there's an extra border around my screen. So when this option pops up to get rid of that, I tick yes. It won't be removed until after the Pi reboots though. This is important for HDMI on televisions. I find my Wi-Fi network in the next box and then enter the password. Now I'll wait a few moments while the connection is fully established before I move on. The next step is updates. This part will likely take some time. It took about seven to 10 minutes on my system. But you know me, I like to keep everything as up to date as possible so it's worth it. Say okay at the end and now click restart to restart your Raspberry Pi. Once the Pi has rebooted, click on the world icon up the top to open a web browser and the black box with the arrow and underscore 
to open a terminal window. In the web browser, go to the project page for this site, techdoctor.com.au forward slash newscast. This will get you all the commands you need from here on in. Highlight each command on its own and copy it. I use Control C. Then click on the terminal window and I use right click and then select paste to paste the command in. Execute it by pressing enter at each step. The first command adds some extra software and you'll need to press Y and then enter to confirm. The second command opens a blank script and you'll need to copy all of the details from the box below it and paste it in the script. You'll also need to make sure you go and change the URL shown here to the one that you actually want for your slideshow that you created earlier. Make sure there's a space and an ampersand or and symbol at the end of the line. When it's right, press Ctrl X to exit and Y and enter to save. This next command gives you the display number. In every case, I've always had it saying 0, 0.0, but it might not be, so it's worth checking. You'll need it in the next step. Create the service file and copy the contents of the next box into it, changing the display number if yours is different. Then again, it's Control X to exit, Y and Enter to save. Run the next three commands to get the service started properly, check the slides open, and check the status of the service. You can see here it says the service is active. Press Control C to exit. There's one more file to edit. Add forward slash home forward slash pi forward slash kiosk dot sh to a blank line at the end of the file. Press Control X, Y and enter. Now we're done. Close the terminal window, make the web browser full screen, click the Raspberry Pi menu at the top left, click log out and then press restart. The Pi will reboot, download your slideshow and start displaying it. It's as easy as that. You can now hook it up to your display television, power it up and walk away. Your news or advertising will loop happily pretty much until the power goes out. If all of this seems a little bit complicated, on the project page, I'll have an option where you can download a complete copy of the Raspberry Pi OS with everything pre-configured for a small fee. Or if you like the idea, but don't feel like getting it all set up, I can even pre-configure a complete system for you, possibly other than the Wi-Fi, and ship it to you ready-made. Contact me via the project page if you're interested in this option. If you found this useful and are using it in your club or business, I'd love your financial support to continue the channel and keep providing you with great projects and content like this. There's a link on the project page where you can make a donation either by PayPal or soon Patreon, either a one-off or a recurring donation. Whatever you do will help. Thank you so much. Question of the day. Do you like these sorts of project-based videos? Let me know in the comments down below. And if this video was useful, give it a thumbs up. Thank you. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician. Learn about the technology, protect yourself from the bad guys, and fix it when it breaks. There's some older videos you may not have seen before, here and here. And there's a logo down here where you can subscribe to the channel and then click the bell to be reminded of all the new episodes as they come out. There's also a mailing list up the top to get the news prescription of the month. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you on the next episode.